welcome. Today I have a card share for you from projects that I've worked on in February 2019. I was just getting everything sorted out. It looks like it is all cards this time. I don't have everything that I've made in February because a lot of things have been given away, but this is what I have currently in my possession to show off. And I do have um, some stamp and die products to show you as well that I used on those. If you're interested in any of those, I'll have those linked down below. And in terms of specific products on something, just feel free to ask if you have a question about something and then I'll let you know what that is and or where it came from for your convenience. Uh, I normally would have my February 2018 scrapbook pages to show you. I'm not done with those yet. <laughs> and I need, I need to film this video because I need the desk space. So. <laughs> Um, I'll probably show you February and March all together uh, next month. <clears throat> Excuse me, so we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I want to show you, just because it's funny, is, a, is the uh, Valentine's Day card that my husband made for me. And he did a video of this card, so you've already seen it, but I have it in my little pile here, so I thought I'd show it off again. And uh, only my husband would, like, put Pennywise the Clown on a love card for his wife, right? <laughs> So um, the products that he used was the windmill set from Avery L, the Hay There set from Lawn Fawn, and the Polar Pals set from My Favorite Things, and of course some images that just came from Google, and like a Hero Arts stencil, and Distress Oxide inks, and all sorts of fun like that. So that's why this is still in my pile, because... This windmill set here from Avery L. It's a really fun set. This is a recent acquisition for me. I didn't have anything in my stash that did windmilly stuff. I think it's great, and I already have some plans to use the new gnomes from Lawn Fawn with this because I think it would look really nice. Uh, I need a ton of birthday cards. I'm going through so many. I'm now up to like 30 to 40 birthday cards a month, maybe more coming as more people get signed up. I'm part of a... Uh, secret team, if you will, that is sending birthday cards to um, people in a uh, one of our groups for the uh, LGBTQA community. Uh, people that have been disowned or abandoned or worse uh, by their biological families uh, don't really have uh, many other connections. Uh, we're sort of secret birthday fairies this year and make, making sure that everybody in the group um, gets a birthday card, at least one birthday card this year. So as a result, I've been going through tons. So I need, I just, I'm now making birthday cards like in bulk. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the set that I use. And this is my first time using, I made a bunch of different little birthday cards using these windmills and they're so cute. This one, I, I made a thank you card because I accidentally thought that it was the birthday <laughs> birthday sentiment. I wasn't paying too much attention. It may have been really late at night when I stamped this one out. But basically everything was stamped onto Bristol Smooth uh, cardstock. I watercolored it with my Tomo markers. Just really basic and simple. Then I did all of that together. Then I die cut everything together. Um, I have some really fun stitched hillside backgrounds here. And I just did a little bit of shading with some Distress Oxide inks to give it some dimension. And just built different scenes on, on little cards here. So I'll just go through those really quick. Here we are. Here's a birthday one. The little bee is adorable. This is the same bee that my husband used on his card. And I happen to have this set out because I was working with it when he was making this. So that's how the bee came to be in his possession. And this one. And this one. And this one. Just slightly different variations of the same thing. This one I thought it would be really fun. And I propped the windmill house up and then I put a brad in to see if the uh, the actual windmill would spin and it does spin it just doesn't really flick very well it's, it's on there a little bit too tight but I'm sure someone will get endless enjoyment out of this anyway again the windmill set from Avery L this is not this is not a new set but it is a very fun set and it is a recent acquisition for me <clears throat> moving on um, something that you've probably seen before because I recently did a very quick video on making these watercolor backgrounds. Uh, just a very simple technique. I actually had a bunch of watercolors left in my tray from another project and I had a lot of blue left in particular and I knew that I needed some ocean backgrounds because I had this this project going at the same time. So I did a quick video and just showed you how I made these really broad brush stroke ombre backgrounds here. You can go back and take a look at that if you'd like, but this is the stamp set that I used. This is from The Ink Road, and this was their July 2018 kit. This is called Samantha. 
Lara, the owner of the Ink Road, names her limited edition sets after some of her fans from her fan club. Uh, and this one was named after Samantha, and it's Never Be Afraid to Make Waves and Salty AF. <clears throat> really cute. I stamped her in some Bristol Smooth, watercolored her with my Tomco, uh, Tombos, and fussy cut her out because I don't have a, they don't have coordinating dies for this one. Then I just used some gems. Instead of coloring the little uh, hair gem jewels here, I just used some gems from my stash just to give it a little bit of dimension here. But these are those very broad brushstroke watercolor backgrounds and I flicked on some different metallic inks just to give it a little dimension. So here are the cards that I have with this one. This one might be my favorite because I just like the way that the background looks with the coloring on the mermaid. I enjoyed this little project. I enjoy this stamp set. The Ink Road, <clears throat> excuse me, no longer does the monthly subscription. Um, some sort of issue with the billing, I think it was. But she does still release a limited edition uh, three by four set every month. So if you're interested, definitely take a look. <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. The next thing that I have to show you, um, and I'm only gonna show you the outside because the inside has um, the printed invitation information about it. These are the um, baby shower invitations that I made for my sister's baby shower. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. I'm recovering from a very yucky cold. It just, it's been weeks with losing my voice and congestion and all those things. Um, my other sister and I are hosting a baby shower for our pregnant uh, sister. And these are the invitations that we made. She's expecting a baby boy and I used the Rub-A-Dub set from Lawn Fawn. And the cute little ducky and the mommy baby ducky. I just thought that, hey, baby shower, baby shower. So it just says rub it up, dub a new baby to love. And then on the inside, I have printed the uh, shower in information and stuff, which I'm not obviously going to show on camera. I just thought those came out really cute. I made 15 of these, and I have just one left. I saved it for my sister for her baby book for the baby so she can hang on to a, actually, I want to put that in a different pile so she can hang on to a, a memoir of that. Moving on, a fun little set from Neat and Tangle. This is called Dazzling, and it's a little set of crystals here, and it has the ribbon image already on the stamp, and you can choose You Make Life Sparkle or You Are Dazzling to put in there. It has these really fun stars in the background. I wanted to make uh, some cards that had a lot of shine in them, so I'm trying to use up some pearlescent watercolors that I have in my stash. And actually, I don't have it in front of me. Just, you know, the really cheap, five dollar set of pearlescent watercolors that you grab from Michaels is what I used on those. And I pulled in a couple of papers from my stash. I'm not sure if you can pick it up on, if this is picking up on camera, but I have this textured um, white paper here. It's got, it's, it's sort of pearlescent and it's got like a wavy texture on it. So um, I decided to use some of that for the cards just to give it a little bit more sparkle. I, because I watercolored on these, I stamped this on watercolor paper and then I did that watercoloring with that watercolor that I was telling you about and then I die cut it out and obviously the die cut doesn't cut out the stars then I stand I was just trying to see if I could heat emboss on this pearlescent paper and I can then I stamped this whole image onto the pearlescent paper heat embossed that on and then obviously it stamped the crystals as well but I just propped the ones that I had painted up with a little foam tape and put it directly over it so it covers the um it covers the second stamped image with the one that I wanted to want it wanted oh, that was watercolored and this is you make life sparkle and you are dazzling and I just pulled in some uh gems for my stash these are pre pre sticky gems from oh my gosh I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> but uh, just some, uh, uh, just gems from my stash. Sorry. <laughs> All right, moving on. Not too much left to go, but the next one is a big one. I have this stamp set here <clears throat> from Concord and Knight. This is called Geo, and this is a fan fantastic stamp set. Probably one of my favorite things that came out in all of 2018 and I got it a couple months ago and I haven't been able to use it because I wanted, I wanted to use alcohol inks with it because I thought that the different look that you get with the alcohol inks would be perfect uh, with this geode thing and boy was I right. <laughs> um, I did some alcohol inking for the first time and then I on Yupo paper 
and I had a ton of different images and I stamped on all of the UPO paper, I stamped the geodes and then I heat embossed on top of the UPO paper. It will heat emboss but the, uh, the UPO paper will curl a little bit so you've got to be super quick about it but it will heat emboss. And then I cut them all up and turned them into cards. I made a huge pile of cards with all of those things. Um, not only for birthdays, but I, I have kind of selfish reasons for this as well. There is a, right down the street from my house, now we live in like rural nowhere in New Hampshire, right down the street from our house, we can actually walk to it, they've opened a gem and mineral gift store. So I was thinking if I had a bunch of examples, I could walk down there with my geo cards and see if they'd be willing to take some of my cards on commission or wholesale. Because hey, it's it's like a gem and a mineral, right? It kind of fits the theme. So these are the cards that I made with that. We have, um, and again, every single one of these geodes is uh, an alcohol inked background with some heat embossing over it. And this one I used some glitter paper in the background. Uh, fun hint, I, I usually have a hard time getting adhesives to stick on top of the glitter paper to hold stuff down. I ran this through all together as a sandwich through my Gemini and it really pressed it down and it's held pretty, pretty steadily since then. So I've got Stay Strong. You are a rare friend. I do have the coordinating dies for this stamp set and it, it cuts out the you are a rare find sentiment. Hope your day rocks. Stay strong. Look at that pretty blue. You are my rock. Thanks. And again, this is on some more glitter paper. I think this is actually maybe my favorite thing is glitter paper for my stash. I'm just trying to use stuff up. Thanks for being my rock. You're beautiful inside and out. These ones came out so beautiful. This background here with the gold heat embossing over it. And I have this, actually I achieved this look by mixing purple and blue and light blue and a gold mixative. This one came out really cool. Then you are strong. And then I, I practiced, uh, not practice, but then I cut, cut some of the images apart and practiced my placement. Hope your day rocks. You're a rare find. And this is the problem that I have. The, I was talking about how the um, the heat embossing has curled up the UPO paper a little bit. So in some places, it's no matter how much adhesive I put behind it, it's lifting from the paper. I imagine that um, if you're not in, if you're not a card maker, and if you're looking at that, it kind of just looks like it's part of the design. So I'm not stressing out too much about it. These ones are really pretty, red and pink with some silver mixative and silver heat embossing. This is just all blue. I experimented with different kinds of brush strokes on this one. This orange came out really nice too. This one's upside down and more curly. It's probably the curliest of them all here. The lifting up. Anyway, so huge pile of geo cards. I'm gonna get these stamped up with my stamp on the back and I'm gonna get these packaged up and maybe next week I'll walk down to that shop and see what they think about my cards. You never know until you ask, right? Okay, so that was Geode, and here is one that you've seen before, possibly because I've recently did a video where I did a watercolor paint background using the Garden Snail background stamp from Spellbinders, and I also have the coordinating uh, individual character stamp set with the coordinating dies, and I, I only showed the making of one card in the video, but I actually made two cards with this, <clears throat> excuse me, and different uh, watercolor at different times with different uh, co uh, colors, obviously, that I mixed. I used liquid watercolors to do these. So I have this one here where I left the background just plain. <clears throat> and on the inside, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry, I used some of those die cuts to embellish the inside. And on this one, I used those die cuts and I prop them up with a little foam and then place them on top of their coordinating images from the stamp just to give it a little bit of dimension and then I left the inside plain. And this inside sentiment comes from this Avery L stamp set called Brushed. It's the happy birthday sentiment. I just thought that was really cool. It looked really nice with the, the theme to me of the stamp here. Now this background stamp is a background stamp so it doesn't come with a coordinating die but I fussy cut. I fussy cut it out and then put it on some craft cardstock and I believe this craft cardstock comes from my favorite things. It's so smooth and nice. Okay, the last thing that I have to show you Moving on is I made some birthday cards using the Your Super stamp set from My Favorite Things. 
and I have the coordinating dies for that as well. Really nice stamp set, and I did a little bit of background play with this one as well. I have, this is the radiating halftone background. I did some heat embossing um, with silver embossing powder on the background here. I thought that was fun. I actually made two of them. Again, because I need a ton of, ton of birthday cards for my stash. Oh no, I'm just looking. I have a little bit of a smudge going on here with my Nuvo Drops. I'm going to have to tend to that with an eraser. Um, and then these are all just stamped on Bristol Smooth watercolored and um, die cut. I'm sorry, no, these aren't. These are al alcohol inked, I believe. Yeah, these are just alcohol, uh, just very quick basic alcohol marker coloring. And then this one here, I made a fun background using the Hero Arts Starlight Star Bright background, which you guys have seen a million times before because I love it. And just a little sky scene and I have some gems on there. So there you go, a couple of basic birthday cards. So I kind of, uh, kind of had a busy month. <laughs> This is all the cards <laughs> that I've just shown you here in this tote. Anyway, so again, I'm going to have the, uh, at least the stamps and dies that I've used. I'm going to have those listed down below. If you have any questions about any of the other products, definitely do. Just let me know. You can contact me using one of my buttons down below, um, or you can leave a comment down below. Thanks so much. I hope that you've enjoyed, and I'll see you again in March with the next batch of stuff. Take care. Bye.